Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Paul, and I am a nerd, and you are lucky enough to be here for the September 2019 Practice Master Virtual User Group Meeting, where today we are talking about attaching documents to emails. Mary Jo is going to take that topic. And the verified documents routine that is there, but nobody really seems to know much about. We're going to explain the mysteries behind that. I'm going to take that topic. So without any further ado, since I'm so good at hitting these magic buttons, I'm going to hit them all and uh, get to, to a point where I can get Mary Jo into Practice Master and she can start to talk about attaching to emails. Yes. So we have two ways that we can attach a Practice Master documents to emails. So after you've saved a document into Practice Master underneath whatever matter it is that you'd like to save it under, um, it's stored in Practice Master. So the question Paul and I get a lot is, well, how do we get it out? How do we attach it? What do we do? So there's two different ways. I'm going to start one from Outlook. So I'm going to open up Paul's Outlook maybe here. And if we go to a new email, and in the Practice Master ribbon, we've got a little button here that says Attach PM Document. If we go in from Outlook and use this way to get to a document, and we click on that, it's going to go into Practice Master, and what it's going to do is take us directly into the document management window for all documents. This is like the document file. So all documents for all clients are out here in this view. You can use any of the current filters that you have set up. So if you've got a My Documents filter over here in Quick Clicks, you can use that. You can use any of your Quick Tabs up here to sort your documents. If you've got a My Docs or a By Type, any of those things, you can use those to sort your documents. Or you can even just sort by the client ID and scroll down to that client ID and get the document that you'd like to attach. You can do more than one. So let's say that I wanted to do this document and this document and attach it. I'm just going to go ahead and select them by clicking and checking those off. I'm going to say OK. Now that I've done that, here's my email. So I can start it to whoever I want with those two documents in the email for me. So you can go in there and you'll get immediately sent to the doc management file, which is the bulk. It's everything. You can then sort down using filters, or you can go by client ID and find the document or documents you want to attach and say OK. The second way that we can do this, I'm just going to close out of this, is while you're actually in Practice Master, you could go to a client, and I'm going to go into uh, Michael Larson, and we're going to go look at some of his documents out here. So let's say that I had Michael Larson and I wanted to oh, send a couple of different documents out uh, in an email. Well, as long as I'm in Practice Master, again, I can use my by type or whatever within the matter of Michael Larson. Uh, I can select using my control key or my shift key and pick and choose which documents that I want to actually email. And once I've selected those documents that I want, I'm just going to go over to Quick Clicks and go to the Send Email option. So when I click on that, it's going to start an email with those three documents attached to the client ID, the email defined for this particular matter. Now if this isn't who you want that email to go to, you can quickly just take it out and put it to whoever. But just be aware, it will autofill from the matter contact that's defined in Practice Master when we hit the Send Email. Um, there's my documents here, and these were all from that Michael Larson matter. Now if I wanted to attach documents from multiple matters to an email, I could then go back out to my document management window, which is again that bulk document management window. This is all of the documents that are saved in Practice Master. Again, I could do it by type, my docs, any of those things. And I could actually select the different clients based on what I want, you know, the different documents for different matters, because everybody's in here. So now I've got one for Kelly White and one for whoever 102 is and so on. And um, then I can go ahead and I can send an email that way too. So you've got a lot of different options, either directly from Practice Master, using the doc management file, picking and choosing and sending email from Quick Clicks, or directly from Outlook where you would choose the attachments that would take you into the doc management file, and you can again sort, filter, pick your documents there, and attach them to an already started email from Outlook. Paul? Checking my mute status again here. We had problems with our mute in the Tabs Through Virtual User Group meeting in case you weren't there. <laughs> okay. Thanks, Mary Jo. 
Um, the two good ways to get documents into emails. That one in Outlook is brand new. I think that came out near the tail end of 20, uh, 20 I was going to say 2019, version 19. Um, the other one, the one that's over here, the send email, has been here for a while. But the problem is that you really kind of need both of them to sometimes get what you want into the right place. And so that works very well. Um, I am going to talk about verified documents. Now, I'm going to go in there to start things off. So I'm going to go ahead and grab this and click on verified documents here. And that's going to take me to this routine. Not very exciting. Start and close. Those are my options. So let me explain what's going on here. Practice Master has two modes to manage your documents, to allow you to store documents in Practice Master. Unmanaged and managed. I'd say more than 90% of our clients that are using Practice Master for document management are using a, a managed mode. What that means is that when you go to save a document using the Save to Practice Master button in Word or Excel, um, it knows already that it's going to put it where it thinks it should go. In other words, it's going to manage the storing of that document. It's going to take the document and store it someplace on the whatever drive, the F drive, the S drive, whatever drive it is that you've identified that Practice Master should be storing these documents on. It's going to put it there, probably by client number and then another folder for matter number and then perhaps another folder for doc ID. But those are things that are decided and set up when we set up the management of those documents, the managed document management setup. Um, what that means then is that all that Practice Master will ask you for when you go to put away a document is the name, the client, the things that you see on the document management screen. The other way of setting up Practice Manage Master to manage documents is unmanaged. And by that, I mean that when you hit a button to save a document to Practice Master, it's going to first let you put it where you want it to go. We don't recommend this because A, it's an extra step. You're saving the document there, and then you're filling out that same document profile screen in Practice Master. So that's what it does. It lets you put it where you want it, and then it allows you to fill out the screen that links that document to Practice Master. That's why we recommend Managed because um, Practice Master takes care of putting it away for you, and it does it in such a way that once you understand how it's doing it, you can get there yourself. Therein lies the problem, because you can get to these documents outside of Practice Master just by going through Windows File Explorer, and because you can also get to them through Practice Master, with Practice Master knowing what you're doing when you get to them there, there's a chance for them to move around or to have names changed without Practice Master knowing, or any number of other things that could cause problems. So with that said, I'm going to start this verification. I'm going to click on Preview. And we're going to show you that we have two types of errors. We have document management file errors where, for instance, we have a document management record that has a file that does not exist. That's the extent of these six errors that are errors with the document management file. I'm not going to go into each error and how to correct them because usually those are things that you just need to know there's a problem and get somebody to fix. But what I am going to do is explain when you use this and, 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 and what it's telling you. So that's what it's telling you up here. In your document management file, you have six records that point to documents that are not where it says they should be. Now, there's also situations in here where there are problems with the documents. So it goes out to the place first in this first section. It goes out to all the records it has for documents, checks to make sure that it finds all the documents for all the records in the right place, uh, and that's where it found these six that did not exist. Then it goes and checks out the documents that are in that special place where Practice Master is, quote unquote, managing your documents. And it makes sure that every document there has a record. And so here we have quite a few of them that have document management record not found. And so what that means is somebody has stored something to that place on the, on the server, on the F drive, the S drive, wherever it is, without putting it into Practice Master at the same time. They've gone around the back and they've just put a document there. These are your two most common types of errors. You have document management records that exist, but the document itself does not. That's what we see up top with these six. 
or we have documents that exist, but the document management record does not exist. In other words, somebody's put a document into the file structure where Practice Master is planning to know everything about every document that's in there, and it's found one, or in this instance several, that do not have corresponding document management records. That, in essence, is what the verification program does. Now, it's also going to find certain other problems about records that don't have doc types or things that need to be moved to the right place, and it'll fix whatever it can. So, for instance, if it finds a problem and says, well, this is a problem, but I know that if I just move this over here, that won't be a problem anymore, then it'll fix that. So some of the errors that you'll see are self-correcting, and the next time you run the Verify Documents program or error report, you won't find that error again because it's self-corrected the first time around. Some of them are ones where you either need to figure out why this file does not exist, and if it really shouldn't exist, then get rid of the document management record or find the file that's missing and get it in the right place. Um, so some of them have to be corrected by a human, and some of them will be self-corrected by the routine. But the important thing to understand is that this program is there if you're using document management in Practice Master, and it should become part of your monthly routine. Perhaps every month at the end of the month when you're closing your books and tabs or when you're doing something else that requires that you get people out of the software, because this is an exclusive access sort of thing, um, the document verification can be run uh, and should be run on a monthly basis and when you think you have a problem. So it's a preventive thing uh, that should be run on a monthly basis to identify potential problems that you don't may maybe know about. And it's also something that when you think there may be a problem, this is a good place to start. Uh, bottom line, if you find problems you can't fix, call us, call STI, call somebody and, and get help because everything that it finds here can be fixed. We just need to, to fix it. Uh, and that's that. Um, next month, we're going to talk about the new uh, Net Documents integration that's available for Tabs and Practice Master. So we'll talk about it, show how it works, see it, see it in action. And we're also going to, I'll take that topic, and Mary Jo's going to take the topic of viewing active users. We find a lot of people that don't really understand how to tell what users are currently in their system, what they're doing, what, what, what those things mean, and, and, and how you can work with them. So Mary Jo's going to tell us about that. I am going to take you to attorneycomputersystems.com. Notice my emphasis on the last S in the word systems, because without it, you don't get to the right place. So make sure you get that last S in there. If you will then either hover over or click on the word videos, I'm clicking on it, but if you hover over it, you'll get a, a little kind of pop-up menu. But if you click on it, you just get taken to the separate page where we will see that Attorney Computer Systems has six titles. Four of them are live. We have three virtual user group meetings. You happen to be in the Practice Master virtual user group meeting right now. We also have virtual user group meetings for tabs and world docs. And you know, sometime in the future, we're going to have virtual user group meetings as well for uh, 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 Cosmolex and Net Documents. But right now, these are the three that we have. And we also have another live event, uh, the monthly Coffee Pot webinar. We know what the VUGs are, the virtual user group meetings. The Coffee Pot webinars are a monthly uh, webinar that we give where I invite somebody in from a company that has a product that adds value to tabs three or Practice Master or uh, Net Documents or World Docs or Cosmolex, and we get them to explain their product, demonstrate it, talk about pricing, answer questions. It's just a good way to learn about things that could be out there to help you that aren't really part of the, the core products but are add-on products. Uh, we also have our two pre-recorded titles. We have the eBytes video series and the Paul and Mary Jo show. Mary Jo re records three eBytes every month, one on Tabs, one on Practice Master, one on Cosmolex. Uh, so we have these are short two, three minute videos where we have something really cool that we think everybody should know about and that we also feel that we can explain very quickly and so we record an e-bite about them. For those things that we feel everybody should know about but that are a little bit more broad or need us, need us to go a little more in depth or a little deeper into the weeds to cover everything, we have the Paul and Mary Jo show. Either I or Mary Jo will record one of these each month we trade off. And these are longer. We'll take 10, 15, sometimes even 20 minutes to really get into the, uh, the meat of an issue and, and get, uh, explain things uh, that can't be explained in two or three minutes like we do with our e-bytes. Uh, I'll take you into the Practice Master Virtual User Group Meeting More Info button just to show you how these are structured once you get in there. Uh, we have a very uh, generic title. 
we have a description for that particular series, and then since it's a live event, we have information on the next scheduled event and what the topics will be, along with four fields that if you fill out and then click the register button, you'll be set to, to attend. And then as you scroll down, you'll find uh, that we have recorded versions of every webinar that we've done before. Um, we must be a little bit behind on August because I see we have two that are currently in post-production. But uh, as we go back further, uh, we get into real recorded versions of the, uh, the webinar in question. In this instance, uh, I believe the Practice Master Virtual User Group meeting. If we were to scroll to the bottom, you'd notice that we have 26 pages with five or six per page. So we have a lot of these on there already. We have somewhere between 800 and 900 vid videos currently on our website, and they are very informative. And not only that, they're free, and they're available 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. Uh, so please take advantage of them, use them, uh, listen to them, get a, gl a glass of wine, curl up in front of the fire with your iPad. I, just, I understand it's very enjoyable. That's it for today. Everybody have a good rest of the day and a good rest of the month, and we will see you here next month. Thanks much. Bye-bye.